Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to build a 24 volt 4.2 kilowatt hybrid on and off grid solar power system and it's going to be step by step complete video tutorial. Get ready to learn about the components, benefits and installation. Let's dive in. Major parts list. We have hybrid inverter, solar panels and battery bank. So we are going to use 10 pieces of 555 watts. Canadian solar 10 pieces is equal to 5.55 kilowatt Pmax. And also we have a hybrid inverter. This is the hybrid inverter model 24 volt AGH-4.2 kilowatt PRO. And our battery bank, we're going to use LiPo 424 volt 120 amp hours lithium ion battery. So let's start with the 555 watts Canadian solar. That's the model name. Pmax is 555 watts. VOC is 49.95 volts. VMP is 42.1 volts. I short circuit 14.04 amps. IMP 13.19 amps. Dimensions height, width, and depth, it is 88.8 .8 inches by 44.6 by 1.37 inches. The 4.2 kilowatt hybrid inverter, we have the output AC output and UPS power 4,200 watts or 4.2 kilowatt. Maximum efficiency is 97%. Maximum PV input power is 6.2 kilowatt or 6,200 watts. Battery voltage range 24 volts. DC PV input voltage is recommended is 240 by the manufacturer. That's the ideal VOC voltage. The minimum is 60 and maximum is 450 volts DC. Full load MPPT voltage range is 240 volts to 450 volts DC. Input current is 18 amperes. Maximum charging current is 120 amperes. And it is very important for you to read the complete specs of this hybrid inverter as well as the user manual. The last one is our 24 volt lithium ion phosphate battery bank. Model 25.6 volt 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. Nominal voltage is 24 and rated capacity is 200 amp hours. Maximum charging current is 29.2 amps. Maximum discharging current is 250 amps. Charging operating temperature is 0 degrees to 65 degrees Celsius. And discharge operating temperature is minus 20 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. We also need two pieces of MCB enclosure box. I always separate enclosure box for DC and for the AC. Safety devices, DC and AC side. First on the list, we have our PV isolator switch rated 32 ohms, 1200 volts DC. We're going to use it as a switch isolator switch between PV arrays to DC MCB. Note that this will be optional. Second is the two pole MCCB for battery bank. 5.5 kilowatt of Pmax on your PV array, 150 amps, 600 volts DC is enough. Sizing of fuses. Breakers. Fuses and circuit breakers are primarily used to protect the system wiring from catching fire or getting damaged if a short circuit occurs. They are not necessary for the system to run properly, but it is recommended for safety purposes only. There are three different locations where fuses or breakers must be installed. One between the inverter and solar panel. Two, between the solar inverter and battery bank. Three, you can add one more breaker at the inverter output. DC breaker fuses sizing. As per NEC, the DC fuse or breaker size can be determined as per the following equation. Circuit ampacity equals short circuit current ESC multiplied by safety factor 1.56. We have single string of 5.5 kilowatt PMX using 10 pieces of 555 watts connected in series. Short circuit current AC is 14.04 amperes. DC breaker size 14.04 multiplied by 1.56 equal to 21.90 amperes. Round up to the next standard trade size which will be 25 amperes. The third is the DCMCB or two pole DCMCB rated 25 amps 1000 volts. And next to that is the two pole DCSPD rated 20 to 40 k 500 volts. AC breaker fuse sizing. And of course we are going to use ACMCB. AC breaker is placed at the inverter output and the outlet for AC appliance. The DC fuse or breaker sizing NEC ampacity formula also changes on the AC side of the circuit. Instead of 1.56, the multiplier is 
and in place of the short circuit current, you must use the maximum or continuous output current listed on the inverter specification sheet. Circuit ampacity equal to inverter AC output current multiply by safety factor 1.25. We have 4.2 kilowatt hybrid inverter AC continuous output current is 25 amperes. ACMCB size 25 multiply by 1.25 equal to 31.25 amperes. Round up to the next standard trade size which will be 32 amperes. Two pieces of this we're going to use one for the hybrid inverter input and another for AC output rated 32 ohms, 275 volts or you can have higher voltage rating and two pieces of two pole AC SPD rated 20 to 40k. 275 volts. Last on the list is the copper ground rod. The length is 2.4 meters, wires, cables, and miscellaneous. First on the list, we have 6 square millimeter twin core, 30 meters to 50 meter PV wire. But the length should be calculated based on the distance between your PV array and the main system. But I would suggest at least by 30 meters. Next is the ground wire. It has to be 10 square millimeter, at least 30 meters. Third is the 35 square millimeter battery cable, at least 5 meters each with terminal lug and 10 square millimeter 10 meters of DHHN AC wires. We are now on the animated diagram of PV array safety devices and grounding system. First, let's take a look at the PV array. We have single string of 4.2 kilowatt P max using 10 pieces of 555 watts connection in series. We're going to dive into a fundamental aspect of solar panel string installation, series connections. Let's get started. What is a series connection? In a series connection, the positive terminal of one solar panel is connected to the negative terminal of the next. This creates a longer circuit and increases the overall voltage of the system. Why series connections? Voltage boost. Series connections are often used to increase the voltage output of a solar array. This is important because many inverters require a specific voltage range to operate efficiently. By connecting panels in series, the total voltage output of the system is increased, which is often necessary to meet the input voltage requirements of inverters. Matching inverter requirements. By connecting our panels in series, we are ensuring that the output voltage matches the input requirements of our inverter. Calculating the total voltage and power. Remember, we have 10 solar panels, each with a VOSC of 49.95 volts and a maximum power of 555 watts. To find the total voltage of the series connection, we simply multiply the VOC of one panel by the number of panels. So 49.95 volts multiplied by 10 number of solar panel equal to 499.5 volts. Total power. The total power of the series connection is calculated by multiplying the power of one panel by the number of panels. So, 555 watts multiplied by 10 number of solar panels equal to 5550 watts. Equipment needed. List. Before you start, make sure you have the following. Solar panels, MC4 connectors, wire inverter, and the necessary tools. Step 1. Planning. Start by planning the layout of your solar array. Consider factors like shading and orientation. Step 2. Wiring. Connect the positive terminal of one panel to the negative terminal of the next using MC4 connectors. Continue this process until all panels are connected in series. Step 3. Grounding. Ensure that the system is properly grounded to protect against electrical shocks. Now we are going to connecting the PV string output positive and negative wires to an isolator switch. The isolator switch acts as a safety device preventing electric shock in case of a fault. Connect one end of the PV string to the 32 ohm, 1200 volt DC isolator. This is optional. I'm using two pieces enclosure box on for the DC side one for AC side. The next step, DC combiner box connection. Connect the other end of PV isolator switch positive and negative wires to the DC SPD surge protection device. The SPD protects the system from voltage surges caused by lightning or other electrical disturbances. Inside the combiner box, first we connect the PV string to the DC SPD rated at 20 to 40 kA. The output of DC SPD is connected to the grounding rod. 
input of DCSPD positive and negative wires connected to the DCMCB, which is rated at 25 amps and 1000 volts, and output of the DCMCB connected to the inverter. The wire connecting to the battery, MCCB and inverter should be adequately sized to handle the expected current without excessive voltage drop or overheating. The MCCB and other electrical components should be installed according to electrical codes and safety guidelines. Now we are using a 150 ampere MCCB for a 24 volt 200 ampere hour lithium battery connected to an inverter to ensure the safety and protection of the electrical system. Grid supply connection. Input. Connect the incoming 220 volt AC supply from the grid to the input terminals of the energy meter. This is typically done through a suitable service cable. Energy meter connection. Output. Connect the output terminals of the energy meter to the distribution board. Phase wire. Connect the phase wire from the energy meter to the input of the main MCB32 amps on the distribution board. Neutral wire. Connect the neutral wire from the energy meter to the neutral bus bar on the distribution board. Distribution board connections. MCB32 amps. Install and connect a 32 amp MCB in the distribution board. This MCB will act as the main switch for the entire system. ACSPD connection. Connect the ACSPD. Connect the two wires, phase and neutral, from the output of the 32 amp MCB to the input terminals of the ACSPD. ACSPD to the input terminals of the under over voltage protection device. Two wires, phase and neutral, are connected to the input terminals of 40 amp changeover switch likely terminals 1 and 5. Inverter connection. Input. Terminals 1 and 5 of the changeover switch are connected to the input terminals of the inverter. This allows the inverter to provide AC power when the grid supply is unavailable or faulty. Output. The output of the inverter is connected to terminals 3 and 7 of the changeover switch load connection. The output terminals of the changeover switch terminals 2, 4, 6 and 8 are connected to the loads.